The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. Contemporary nuclear physicists have found that even simple party tricks can have real scientific interest. For example, a Maryland State College chemistry professor has now explained the tiny electric sparks which appear when you bite into a piece of wintergreen candy in the dark. It's true, Dr. Linda Sweeting has been researching this phenomenon, technically known as triboluminescence, for five years. She presented her findings at the Chemical Congress of North America in Toronto, Canada. Substances which spark and flash when they are rubbed, crushed, or broken include sugar, salt, quartz, and even human bones. Tribal luminescence, the name drawn from the Greek word tribin, meaning to rub or break, was first reported by Sir Francis Bacon in 1605. Dr. Sweeting said the tiny sparks are created because when sucrose sugar crystals fracture under pressure, positive and negative electrical charges separate. And this voltage builds up until electrons actually leap across the fracture and the discharge makes the nitrogen molecules in the air emit a tiny burst of light. Everything around you, everything is composed of molecular and atomic structure. But who designed it all? What designed it all? Who created the electrical and chemical interrelationships of neutrons, protons, electrons, nuclei, etc.? which compose all of matter. And could it be, could it just be, that this same supreme being who organized atomic matter could organize your life? The mind which designed the universe could govern the nations of this earth, from the tiniest atomic particles to the very affairs of mighty countries and nations. Could there be some sort of connection, some relationship, and what part could you play in this process? Humanity in this moment, in this hour, is living at the most perilous point in all of planetary history. There are more bombs, rockets, warships, warplanes, guns, grenades, and nuclear weapons on Earth today than ever before in the entire history of the world. And in spite of treaties and agreements, the nations continue to produce more of these nuclear weapons, even when they do not deploy them, simply stockpile them in warehouses. Despite occasional periodic lulls and pauses, the countries of this earth seem in a near perpetual state of warfare, economic warfare, political, religious, sociological, and ultimately military. During the entirety of the 20th century, historians declare there have always been, at any given moment, at least 20 wars, and often as many as 40 to 60, declared and undeclared wars being fought between the states and nations of the earth, all at one time, on such a troubled planet as this. What hope, then, is there for peace? Dr. William S. Sadler, in his book, Prescription for Permanent Peace, wrote that the concept of national sovereignty has engendered much of the warfare of human history, that some form of global government would eventually evolve, but that the ultimate solution would be spiritual. This, too, was the conclusion of the most famous historian of the 20th century, Professor Arnold Toynbee of England, who predicted that only a new surge of religious renewal could bring harmony to this war-wearied planet, for war is inevitable as long as hatred prevails. Conflict will be the certain consequence as long as ill will and envy prevail. Bloodshed will ensue as long as animosity resides within the human soul. For actions are but the fruits of motivations. That which is in the heart will rise up to the lips, the proverb declares. So too is the closed mind the predecessor to the clenched fist. That which is on the inside will eventually manifest itself on the outside, just as certainly as an inner bodily infection will in time disclose itself in pale complexion, boils, rashes, jaundice, or some similar symptom. Just so, that which is inside your human heart 
inside of your soul will sooner or later rise up to the surface of your life in your actions, your behavior, your very mode of living. Therefore, it must be concluded the most important aspect of your life, of you, of who you are, what you are, and the way you are, is your inner life. What is it that you value? What do you love? What is truly important to you? What interior restraints do you possess against the inclinations of your more selfish animal nature? For that which is in your heart will one day dominate your behavior. So it is with men, so it is with nations. The only hope for the world, therefore, is also the only hope for you. It is a spiritual realignment, a newness of heart and soul, a newness so vital that your inner desires and aspirations become so loving, so peaceful, that what you really want, genuinely, sincerely want above all, is to be good to others, to love God, to love humanity. That which the world needs is precisely what you yourself need. You need God. God is there for you and for the world, but God must be sought. God must be consciously called upon to instill into your mind, into your heart, your soul, your very being, the love and the truth and the goodness which you yearn for most intensely, which you need most desperately, declared the greatest teacher in all of human history. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. Ask, and you will receive. But you must dare to seek for what you need and what the world needs are identical. They're one and the same. You need God. You need the love of God. You need the peace of God. You need the patience, compassion, forbearance, empathy, forgiveness, strength, power, the purpose of God. All of these things of God you need in your life. You need what the world needs, and the world needs what you need. You need God. Spiritual renewal, transformation of attitude, revivification of ideals, elevation of aspiration, cohesion of energies, and the mobilization of your total personality powers around the greatest goal or objective or the greatest end in mind it is possible for a human being to have, the living will of the living God. God has a will for you. God loves you. God has a plan for this planet, a purpose for your life, a will for you, a way for you to live in joy, in peace, in power, in purpose, as you have really longed and yearned to live for all of your life. God has a will for you, and you can find it, and you can do it, and you can live it if you will seek it. And that is the great adventure of life upon this earth. Life need be boring and meaningless no more for you, because you can find who you are. You can find where you came from, where you're going, where you can be going if you turn your will and your life over to God, if you will but give yourself to a plan, a power, and a purpose greater than yourself, to the all-encompassing embrace of God who has formed you for a reason, for a purpose greater than you may ever have dared to dream or imagine in all the days and years of your life. Your life is not a mere plotless play, a senseless scenario without script or source or center, for you are an infinitely valuable child of the infinite. You are a son or a daughter of the living God. God loves you. God values you. God loves you with an almost blinding affection a care, a compassion, a concern which is with you every hour of every day, every minute, every second of every hour of every day. God is there. God is with you. God's very spirit has been given to indwell your mortal mind, to lead you and guide you if you will seek that wisdom and that guidance. The spirit in man is the candle of God, it is written, searching all the inward places. God can illumine and enlighten your life and fill you with joy and love, peace, power, and purpose if you give your life to God. And this same God, this very God, 
who designed the electronic, atomic, and molecular structure of this universe, who organized the stars in the skies and the neutrons in the atom, the tribal luminescence which makes visible electric sparks when you bite onto a piece of wintergreen candy in the dark, this very God who organized all of that, this very God can organize your life, can organize your day, can schedule your weeks and your months and your years to be satisfying and fulfilled and full of love and full of joy, can empower your mind and soul with high purposes and meanings and values if you will only give your life to this living God who loves you so. If only you would dare to believe it in this moment, in this instant, as you're listening to this radio broadcast somewhere on this good green planet Earth, by satellite or shortwave or however you're hearing it, if in this moment you'll give your life to God, all things will become new for you. For as the old philosopher wrote, O God, thou hast made us for thyself, and the heart of man is restless until it finds its rest in thee. For free literature on the spiritual life, material which I have written on these very topics. If you feel that divine discontent, that inward spiritual restlessness, yearning for a finding and knowing of God, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written some free literature on finding God, getting to know God, growing spiritually, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the spiritual truth which rings down through the corridors of human history that this entire world was intended and created to live as one family of love, the family of God, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, and you are an infinitely valuable son or daughter of this living God in this great far-flung universal family of God. If you're intrigued by this truth, if that rings some sort of celestial bell inside your soul when I speak it into this radio microphone, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vernon and Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.